Let's start here. This frame was captured on December 19th in real time from Chuck's astrophotography using the powerful 24-inch Starfront telescope. At first glance, the image conveys a deceptive stillness. A compact glow, a smooth envelope, nothing that immediately catches the eye. However, the truth reveals itself in the most subtle geometric details. The central region maintains sharp and cohesive definition, but the haze surrounding it extends irregularly in a specific direction. It doesn't radiate symmetrically, it doesn't blend with the star trails, the object maintains its intrinsic shape, while the background, with its perfectly point-like stars, assures us that the tracking is impeccable. And why does this matter so much? Because large apertures don't forgive. A 24-inch system would magnify tracking errors, atmospheric distortions, or processing flaws. If a feature manifests with such clarity here, it is real and intentional. What we're observing is confirmation of a persistent structure with a clear directional inclination, something we had already noticed in smaller telescopes. Now, this evidence is indisputable, with significantly greater resolving power. This image is our starting point. Let's now progress frame by frame to uncover what changes and, crucially, what remains unchanged. Let's proceed to the next evidence. This image, also from December 19th, is courtesy of Yvonne Vasquez from Colopa Stars, captured with a C-Star S50. Compare it to the 24-inch giant we saw. This is a much more modest, consumer-level system. And that's where the proof lies. Despite its stack of only two minutes of exposures 10 seconds each, the object doesn't dissolve into noise or artifacts. The core remains surprisingly compact. The surrounding glow isn't spherical, it extends subtly but unmistakably in the exact same direction we identified in the high resolution data. Notice what we don't see. Stars blurred by poor tracking, nor the signature of aggressive processing, inventing shapes. Yet, the object's elongated internal structure persists even under these conditions. This is a crucial point because smaller telescopes are unforgiving in their own right. The survival of a feature with limited exposure time and humble optics proves this isn't something that only emerges with extreme processing or massive apertures. What we're witnessing is robust behavior independent of the observing instrument. Whether a large telescope or a small one, the narrative is consistent. Let's move forward. Let's now look at this follow-up frame also from the same observer. This is an image composed of 15 to 16 minutes of data, still from the C-Star S50, captured on the night of December 19th. With significantly longer integration time, the object not only becomes brighter, but its structure becomes unmistakable. You can clearly visualize the internal region extending in a narrow, elongated shape, with a brighter area at one end and a more diffuse extension projecting away from it. The surrounding glow isn't round. It exhibits a consistent orientation axis. At the same time, the background stars remain perfectly round. They don't show the same elongation, eliminating any possibility of vibration, incorrect tracking, or image stacking failures. The value of this frame lies in its confirmation over time. It's the same instrument on the same night with prolonged exposure and the same orientation is observed. If it were an illusion or noise, the additional exposure time would disperse it. Instead, it intensifies. This consistency is what continuously catches our attention. Let's move forward. Now, we make a leap to Italy. This image comes to us from Tony Scarato, captured on December 18th using a 25 centimeters Newtonian telescope. This isn't a casual observation. It's a long, meticulously stacked sequence with resolution, pixel scale, and field orientation precisely documented. First, in the raw wide field, notice the slightly trailed background stars. This assures us that the telescope is locked onto the object itself, not the sky's motion. And right at the center, 3i Atlas maintains its compact shape. Now, compare this to the resampled close-up on the right. The inner coma is no longer circular. This isn't an indistinct smudge. It's a specific, measurable direction. The central condensation is clearly defined. And around it, 
the outer coma expands into a broad, greenish envelope, extending hundreds of thousands of kilometers. What's truly relevant here isn't merely the shape, but the complex structure within that shape. There's a compact central core, an elongated inner region, and a larger asymmetric outer coma. A hierarchical system. And, once again, the elongation aligns precisely with what we've already observed in smaller instruments on different continents and on different nights. Different telescope, different processing, but the directional behavior remains the same. It's this consistency that forces us to accept the evidence. Let's continue. This time, our gaze turns to New Zealand. This image, captured by Brian Dietrich on December 17th, comes from a 203 mm Schmidt Cassegrain. Fast exposures, minimal processing, clean and precise tracking. Initially, the scene appears discreet, a faint object without flashy flares, without a tail that jumps out, but it's precisely in this subtlety that the strength of the evidence lies. The central condensation remains compact, no blurring, no fragmentation, and the glow surrounding it isn't chaotic. It's slightly biased in a specific direction. Now, observe the inset. It's a stretch of the same data. Nothing was added, nothing was painted. And again, the internal structure doesn't collapse into noise, it remains intact. The importance of this is immense. With such tenuous objects, processing artifacts usually predominate. Edges waver, centers move, shapes disintegrate. None of this occurs here. Instead, the core remains fixed, while the surrounding material demonstrates the same preferential orientation we've already observed from Italy and Hawaii. Another hemisphere, another telescope, another night, the behavior is the same. At this point, the pattern we're seeing isn't a product of a single setup or a single observer. It emanates from the object itself. Let's continue accumulating the evidence. Now, we leave Earth completely. This image wasn't captured by an amateur telescope, nor even by a terrestrial observatory. It comes from NASA's Europa Clipper probe using its ultraviolet spectrograph, recorded on November 6th at approximately 164 million kilometers away. What you see here isn't a photograph in the usual sense. It's a composite intensity map, plotted in ecliptic longitude and latitude, revealing where ultraviolet emission is concentrated as the instrument scans the sky. That bright blue region, that's 3i Atlas. And notice something crucial, the emission isn't spherical, it's not symmetric. It's elongated along a preferential direction embedded in a broader diffuse structure. Even in ultraviolet wavelengths, even from interplanetary space, even with a completely different observation method, the geometry persists. This is of utmost importance because UV instruments aren't affected by dust tails or the pretty optics of telescopes. They respond to gas, excitation, and interaction with solar radiation. Therefore, when a directional structure appears here, it's not a camera artifact. It's not a stacking trick. It's not contrast abuse. It's physical. At this point, we have the same orientation appearing in raw optical frames, RGB channel separations, long time series stacks, and now ultraviolet spectroscopy from a probe millions of kilometers away. Different physics, same alignment. This is no longer coincidence, it's behavior, and whatever is driving it is still active. So this is where we arrive, on different nights, with different telescopes, on different continents, and now, even from a space probe, 3i Atlas continues to exhibit the same thing a compact core and a directional structure that refuses to fade, randomly rotate, or fragment. This doesn't come from a single observer, it doesn't come from a single filter, and it doesn't appear only after heavy processing. Whatever is driving this behavior, it's stable, persistent, and real. If you're just starting to follow the trajectory of 3i Atlas now, I'll provide a recap of why this object is different from others. Below are the anomalies organized by theme, geometric, compositional, and physical, with a brief comment on why each item is relevant. Geometric and orbital. First, retrograde trajectory almost aligned with the ecliptic plane, probability approximately 0.2%. Second, 
Arrival timing and fine-tuning with specific distances to Mars and Jupiter appears planned. Third, predicted perijove near Jupiter's hill radius, indication of orbital objective. Fourth, extremely collimated sunward anti-tail, unusual in comets. Fifth, rotation axis aligned with the sun's direction within approximately 8 degrees, probability 0.05%. Sixth, periodic jet wobble of 7.74 hours, understandable only if the base is within 8 degrees of the pole. Seventh, jet appearance before and after perihelion with improbable geometric coincidence compound probability 0.000025. Eighth, gravitational deflection at perihelion of 16.4 degrees, exactly double the jet's opening remarkable geometric coincidence. Composition and plume. Ninth, gaseous plume with high nickel and little iron, unusual ratio, reminiscent of industrial alloys. Tenth, plume with only approximately 4% water, well below familiar comets. Eleventh, extreme negative polarization, without parallel among known comets. Physical properties. Twelfth, nucleus more massive than Oumuamua, and two, I, Borisov. But moving faster, strange for a casual interstellar iceberg. Thirteenth, brightness and coloration, rapid brightening and bluer than the sun near perihelion. Fourteenth, jet alignment and collimation, the new anomaly described by Loeb. Fifteenth, the requirement for thermal isolation for active ice pockets at the poles, the so-called 15th anomaly, need for extreme isolation if the explanation is natural. The question now isn't whether the structure exists, it's why it remains so clean and why it's appearing so clearly now. Could it be a jet driven by localized activity? A geometric effect we're capturing at the perfect angle? Or something about interstellar material that behaves differently than we expect? Leave your opinions in the comments. I read them all. And if you want the next update the moment new images arrive, like the video, subscribe, and share this with someone who's been following the 3i Atlas story. We're not done with this object.